world's on stage, and all the men and women merely players. We all have our exits and entrances, and one man in his lifetime who played many parts. Fellow Toastmasters, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests, I am not an actor, but I have played several, several characters throughout my life. <laughs> I enjoy sitting back at times and watching TV. And I just most recently caught up with one of my old time favorite shows, starring a guy by the name of Gary Coleman. <laughs> and I feel comfortable saying Gary Coleman in this audience, because I believe this audience is mature enough to remember <laughs> who Gary Coleman is. <laughs> and a lot of people may not know who Gary Coleman is per se, but when I say the name Arnold Drummond, we tend to connect just a little bit more. The reason I bring that up because although that seemed to be a great character to play, it seemed like it was a perfect role for him growing up because he was this cute, adorable kid with big jaws that people like to pinch his cheeks all the time. And it's Catch line throughout the show was what you talking about, Willis? Or what you talking about, Dad? You know, he, he got known for saying that line. And I saw, it was funny because I saw an interview that Gary Coleman did years later, and he explained his frustration about that role. He said, even years later, as he got older and auditioned for different roles, People still wanted him to be that little kid, that little adorable kid with the big cheeks. People still wanted him to say, what you talking about, Willis? <laughs> and after so many years, he felt like he couldn't even say that anymore because that's not who he was anymore. See, he wasn't Gary Coleman, or he wasn't Arnold Drummond. He was Gary Coleman, but people, did what's called typecast. They put him in that role and they kept him there. They kept him in that role and that's what happens to a lot of our childhood, especially childhood actors and actresses. They get typecast, they get put into a certain role and they get stuck into that role. How many people know who Jaleel White is? Anybody know Jaleel White? Okay, I didn't see a lot of hands, but what if I say Urkel? See, everyone knows Urkel. See, Jaleel White was one of those childhood stars that went through his acting career, and he was stuck. He was typecast as Stephen Urkel. And as he grew up and he grew up and as he matured a little bit, he grew out of that role. But everyone wanted to still stick him in that role. They wanted to typecast him. They kept him as that nerdy kid, but he was no longer Stephen Urban. He was Jaleel White. Another one of my favorite actors, Denzel Washington. So you know Denzel for different roles in movies such as Glory, A Soldier's Story. And see, Denzel was, throughout his movies and acting career, he was pretty much known as the good guy, and he was Nominated for several Academy Awards. Just nominated, though. And see, he won for a supporting role. But never as the leading man until he starred in the movie called Training Day, where he was no longer the good guy that we all love. He became an evil villain. Somebody outside of the box that he's known as. No longer the good guy, but now this man that everyone sees as a villain. But see, as he stepped outside of his box and became this villain, he was not only nominated, but he won the Academy Award as the leading man. And I'll give one more example. There was a young lady that everyone knew as basically the girl next door. She had a good, wholesome image her name was Sandra Bullock. And until 2000, 
She was that good girl, that girl next door, that sweetheart, until she started in the movie in 2000 called 28 Days, where she was a lawyer who was struggling with addiction of alcohol and drugs, and she had to go to a rehab. And see, we were able to see Sandra Bullock in a whole different light. How many times in life have we become typecast? Have we become held to a certain role? I've, I've had that several times, over and over again, as I've, again, played several characters. I've been on several different stages, and I believe in the power of reinventing yourself. You have to be able to reinvent yourself. Regardless of where people want to hold you. You know, at one time in my life, I'm sure, between some friends and teachers and other people who knew me, possibly looked at me and said, this guy's never going to amount to much. And see, with that, it was easy for me to stay in that character, doing things that I know weren't right, being the person that I knew I wasn't. Not anymore. You see, because I've been bald, I refuse to get typecast as who I used to be. And see, it's funny when you move away and come back and people see you years later, it's funny how they still want you to be that same character. But like Gary Coleman, I can't say those lines anymore. I can't play that role anymore because that's not the character I am anymore. I'm George Casey motivational speaker, George Casey, I'm somebody's son. George Casey, I'm somebody's brother. George Casey, I'm somebody's mentor, friend, leader, confidant. See, I don't mind evolving my character. I don't mind being someone else. Even, I love what Mike, uh, Muhammad Ali said when he said, I'm the greatest, and I said that even before I knew I was. And see, that's how I live my life. I live my life not thinking about who I was, but I live my life thinking about who I can become. Not the character that I was, but the man I could be, the man I should be, the man I'm going to be, the man I am. All these are different characters. On that big stage of life, all these characters I've played. But I'm looking for the next role. I'm looking for the next big cast. I'm looking for that next big opportunity to become something bigger than I am now. Something bigger than the world may or may not allow me to be. But see, the choice is mine. I won't get typecast. I won't hold true to someone else's standards of who they think I should be because I know today who I am. I feel I'm a great man of greatness. And my cup overflowing. And as my cup overflowing, I'm able to pour into others who may have been where I've been or possibly heading down that road that I've seen so many times. I want to take a chance and reach out to that person. Explain to them that that's just one character that they'll play. In their lifetime, they'll play many parts. There'll be many characters. Where they are now is not where they have to be. And I think that cuts down the tuition in life because in life, we all have to pay a tuition. There's a cost for living this life that we live and there's no escaping death because it's promised to all of us. So what is there left to fear? A smart man once said there's nothing but fear, but fear itself. But if we all are facing death one day, the ultimate fear, what is there left? We know that's promised to us. We know that's promised to us. But where can we take our life in the, in the time that we're given? Where can we take our lives in the time that we're given? Fellow Toastmasters, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests, 
I challenge you today. Don't let anyone dictate who you are or who you become. Don't let anyone typecast you and keep you stuck in a box because there's so much more to you. There's greatness in everyone in this room and you only have to discover it for yourself. You can be anything you want to be. You can do anything that you want to do because this world, this world <laughs> is such an oyster. And when you open that oyster, you know, sometimes it's not so good. But if you open up enough, you may just find that pearl. If you take enough pictures, you might just find the perfect one. So continue to grow. Continue to be more than you are today. Life is about getting better. Every day, my, my opportunity, my chance is to be better than I was yesterday. And oh, what a grim situation my yesterday was. But what a promising future my tomorrow will be. Because I will never get typecast. And I challenge you all to do the same. Don't let life typecast you. Thank you.